Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bolts from the Bible. Thursday today, I think. Good morning. Daniel? Feeling a little more spry this morning? Yeah, feeling a little bit better. That's good. <laughs> yep. Another six inches of snow last night, too. Six inches? About another six inches, yeah. It's it's up to the bottom of the cars now. Wow. Yeah. And it, I'm it, guessing it's a little out of the ordinary for you well, southern Two six inch snows in one week. That makes 12 inches more than we got last year. <laughs> wow. Yeah, usually it doesn't cover the grass. Maybe maybe one snow a year will cover the grass. This is this is entirely unusual. But the snow plow hadn't even been by this morning and last time it was almost twenty four hours before they came by. We were just not equipped for this. Well, I've been seeing a little bit of it, you know, just cruising around the internet. You can't hardly avoid some of these yeah. news sites and whatnot. And uh I've been seeing that the the South's just getting absolutely hammered. Well, especially Texas, they're not, they're even less prepared for it than we are. And right. It's, there's some people that are, I know it's, it's bad here, but there's some people that are really hurting and I, I really, really hate that. Yeah. And then meanwhile, up here, we're usually just buried under it by now and we haven't had any appreciable snowfall since October. Right. And it's just nothing but a little tuft of white and some brown out there. Other than that, uh, there's absolutely nothing. I haven't pushed snow since that little blizzard that we got in October. So. Yeah. Wow. Well, in keeping with the theme this week, talking about the financial aspects of of shooting, um, there's a, a probably a pretty good chance that a lot of our viewers that are watching this right now um, think that we only buy super expensive equipment and we don't buy anything else and i want to dispel that myth right now and then and then also make sure that everyone's aware of the fact that i probably sell 200 cheap scopes every single year for various companies they don't buy them from me or <laughs> parental rights but they buy them somewhere and that is a function of my my uh, recommendations for them to go do so because frankly a $4,800 tangent theta is not the correct scope for every single application that you might have and more importantly it's it's probably the wrong scope for a lot of the different applications out there so there's a very important aspect to embrace when it comes to this and that is you must operate within your budget you cannot try to overextend and keep up with the Joneses. Not when the, when the, with the pickup that you buy, not with the house that you live in, not with the rifles that you buy, not with the optics. There's, there's nothing where it is gonna benefit you to attempt to live outside of your means. It's just simply not a good idea. It's gonna create all kinds of financial strife in your life it's gonna put a tremendous amount of strain if you have a marriage or a close relationship with someone. Um, so be responsible and make proper choices. You can do this with the full understanding that there is better equipment out there. Yes, it's more expensive. You can put intelligent plans together to attain those things if that's what you want to do. And frankly, I think the goal of trying to attain something that is expensive is one of the most outstanding things that you can have for a goal because it will encourage you. It will cause you to be in motion. It will open up new opportunities. Just asking the universe for it will have a tendency to open up doors that will allow you to attain it. And so having it in your mind is a very healthy thing. Now here's what's not healthy. Letting that consume you and 
being willing to do almost anything to get it. That's not good. That turns into <laughs> greedy. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and that's actually exactly what we're talking about today on the Bible section. So that well, and that's, and that's, that's kind of how it works. Daniel and I, some mornings we'll tell each other what we're going to talk about. Other mornings we don't. We didn't tell each other what we were going to talk about this morning. Yeah. And so that, again, just kind of speaks to the power of your mind. You, you can, in cooperation with other people, have a subconscious communication. And, and it's amazing how many times it works out like this. Um, so you, you cannot have an unhealthy relationship with money. You cannot have an unhealthy relationship with things. You have to make sure you keep your spirit clean, keep, keep the, the core purity of yourself totally under your control. Don't let the control get taken over by any item that you have or don't have. Don't let it get taken over by love of money. Yeah. Now, this concept would seem relatively self-evident, but you wouldn't believe how many people fall victim to this where they're purchasing things that they cannot afford. Right. Now, I have some very pointed conversations with just about every customer that's buying something that's kind of apex level stuff. We've got rimfire rifles built on rim, Rimax options from TS Customs. Those things have a starting price of $4,750. We sell Tangent Data Optics. The 525P has an MSRP over $4,800. And so, these things are very expensive, and it's not something that I enter into lightly. The worst case scenario for me would be for somebody to buy that thing and it not only meet, but not exceed their expectations. That would, that's like a nightmare scenario for me. So I make sure that I have a conversation with everybody to not only make sure that they're getting the right thing for their application, but then, too, that this is something that they fully understand and that they, they get the commitment level that's going to be present there. The prices of this stuff seems to go up every single year, okay? So if you have the liquid capital to absorb that, and that's the decision that you'd like to make, well, then great. Uh, I'm here for you to, to help recommend things in that class of product. Obviously, all we do is service Apex-level equipment. But that doesn't mean that there's not this entire ecosystem of stuff that's lesser. Now, the lesser stuff, it doesn't mean that it is totally incapable of doing anything at any capacity. Because frankly, some people are simply not going to be ready. Even if they can afford the really nice stuff, they really won't get any advantage from it. They won't know the difference between it. And so a certain level of experience seems to be required before you can really understand the differences. So starting with something that's a little bit more attainable, that's less of a risk financially, can be an extremely beneficial thing. Now, here's one example that I'll show you. This is a Bergara B14R, carbon Bergara. Um, this is their 22 long rifle, basically Remington 40X clone, except in, in re repeater form. And so this rifle is about $1,000 retail, and I've got a Vortex Diamondback Tactical First Focal Plane Scope on it. Now, these things are like 350 bucks. Now, if previous episodes have shown you, this is like about as uncharacteristic of a thing as you could possibly imagine me owning, right? <laughs> um, but I take it as a point of personal pride to get experience with these things. And, and the reason that I do that is because, again, I cannot possibly know where things stack up in a hierarchy unless I've experienced everything in that class of products. And so if I want to know exactly how things stack up, I've got to have experience with the bottom, the middle, and the top. I can't just jump to the top and expect that I'm going to know what's going on with the hierarchy. So I don't have a choice. I'm obligated to have this experience. It also gives me the opportunity to keep a pure perspective. 
to ensure that the people that I'm giving advice to, and I find myself in a mentorship capacity for a tremendous number of shooters, and not all of those shooters have structured their life in a way where they can afford or choose to afford. Um, that's usually the most common, actually. There's a tons of people out there that can afford really nice equipment that don't buy it. They've made the conscious choice that they're going to spend their money el elsewhere. Maybe it's going to be on their wine collection. Maybe they like taking golfing trips, whatever it is. The key thing is to be in control of your finances and not let no, them control you. It's, it's making a decision to buy 15 guns instead of one. That's right. If there's any one piece of advice that I give shooters in that position, it's that, you, listen, get rid of all the trash that you've got. You can only buy so many $300 rifles before you realize they just aren't going to be able to do much. And so if you've got 15 $300 rifles, you can sell those and buy a pretty nice custom rifle. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's realistically how you stay in control of your finances. That's how you manage these things, manage these expectations. <clears throat> you adopt the purity of the hierarchy. And because you don't have the experience, you call someone like me. There's, there's a bunch of people like me in the industry. Now that's debatable, obviously. Most people would say that I'm fairly unique. <laughs> but the point is, is that there's people that have experience with gear that can instruct you on at least an approximation of where things fit in the hierarchy. And so they can help you with your equipment choices. And one of the first things that I get into with people when they're asking me, well, what should I buy is budget. Where are you with your financial situation? Because I don't want to sit here and spend three hours talking about $4,000 plus dollar scopes if you can't even afford a $1,000 scope. There's no world where there's those two classes of products would ever meet in their, in their reliability or their performance, and they're totally different. Having said that, you would be amazed at just how good this $350 Vortex Diamondback Tactical first focal plane 6 to 24 scope is. Yeah. This thing is... Yeah, I've had two or three of those through the shop, and they're, they're impressive. For the dollar spent, it's phenomenal. Yeah. It's crazy how good they are. Now, it's not a tangent data. <laughs> Boy. Well, yeah. that's the thing. Generally speaking, I don't really crank the turrets on them very much. I just kind of set the zero and use holdovers. But if you've got a youth shooter... If one of your kids, you want to get them started into precision rifle and get them going on a precision 22, well, this entire package, all, all in, even with an Atlas PSR bipod, I mean, you're talking about $1,600 worth of stuff, $1,750 at most, with some extra magazines and stuff. And so there's a whole class difference when you go between these different categories of product you find that the stuff on the low end is pretty good these days, better than the cheap stuff has ever been in the history of this sport. But you just have to keep your purity about you. You have to keep your critical thinking. You have to keep your honesty. Set your expectations accordingly. My expectations for this stuff is low. Now, having said that, there's one lot number of polar bathlon that I can shoot in this rifle, and it'll shoot in the threes and fours, like just dead consistent. And sure, when it was new, there was a problem with the barrel, the little barrel nut that they used to, to tighten and tension this carbon fiber tube on here. It wasn't true. It was off axis by like seven degrees or something like that. I mean, it was a pretty nasty, um, well, not seven degrees. It was like seven thousandths from one side of it to the other side of it. Mm -hmm. So had to get that thing in a lathe, straighten it up. And then all of a sudden, no problem. I could have my suppressor on there and it shot great. But... When I put the suppressor on there when it was new, it was like 10 mils of point of impact shift at 50 yards. You know, it was pretty severe. <laughs> so as long as your expectation is set correctly, then you can get along with some of this stuff. And more importantly, it would not serve you to spend recklessly for the attainment of something that is better. Because the chances are that you're not going to be able to, if you're the kind of person that's spending recklessly, then you're not really going to be able to afford the very top end thing anyways. 
And if you can't jump straight to the top end, well, then what difference does it make where you are in the hierarchy? At that point, you make a decision that's fiscally responsible. And you make plans then to say, well, here's where I'm at now. And you start a savings account or you do something that is fiscally responsible. You set yourself up and bargain with the future for the kind of equipment you want to see yourself running in one year or five years. Whatever that time period may be, you just create a plan for the attainment of the thing that you want. And you don't let that turn into a destructive force, but rather you use that as a constructive force. You use your desire, your emotionally charged desire to have that thing. You use that to create a situation that allows you to make choices on a daily basis that will inexorably result in you getting that thing. And that's all you have to do. You say, well, this is the thing that I'm going to purchase now because that's going to get me going. That's going to allow me to pursue the discipline because you can pursue this discipline for a remarkably small amount of money. You wouldn't believe just how little you have to spend to start advancing yourself as a shooter. You do not need the highest end best stuff out there if you cannot afford it. If you can, well, then there's an argument to be made and there's some benefits for going right to the apex level stuff. If you're financially liquid and there's no pressure and having the expensive thing isn't going to cause negative effects to ripple through your life, then by all means, give me a call. Let's get you set up with the best stuff right off the bat because I've seen too many shooters hamstrung by inferior gear and they just can't perform. Take a shooter that's, oh man, my rifle's not shooting. I just can't perform. What am I doing wrong? And they're really hard on themselves. I say, well, here, come shoot uh, some rounds through my rifle. Set them down on my rifle, and they're just cranking little tiny ragged bug holes down there at the target. And so it's not to say that there's not a benefit for having the nice stuff, folks. It's simply to say, be honest with yourself and do not live outside your means because nothing good will come from it. Great. Yeah. We talked about being rich yesterday, and I want to, want to continue on that. We looked at all kinds of people in the Bible who were rich. Um, one interesting fact is we continue on this thought. David, as he was setting up for the temple, he put up 100,000 talents of gold. Um, that's estimated to be around 5,000 tons of gold that were set aside for the building of the temple. Now, the biggest collection of gold in the world currently is Fort Knox at 4,600 tons. David had 400 tons more than what is held by the richest nation in the country. Uh, it's estimated that he had about half of the entire world's wealth all saved up and used it. And Solomon, his son, used it in the building of the temple for God. So, yeah, rich man, very, very rich. He had essentially half of the wealth of the entire world at his time. Now, we talk about characteristics of these men. They didn't trust in their riches. They trusted in God instead of the riches. The riches were always secondary and always just something that followed along after their trust in God. And even when the riches were gone, they still trusted in God because that trust in God was, was first and foremost above their riches. The Bible does talk about a bunch of pitfalls that come from riches and things we need to be careful about. As we've talked about a little bit this morning, uh, greed is one of those. Uh, book of Proverbs fifteen twenty seven. it says, He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live. And so again, that, that idea of, of I have to have this, I have to have this, I have to have this, and that consuming our heart and consuming our mind more so than anything else is the greedy attitude that is going to lead us down a very dark path. Now, deciding we are going to get something and putting in place things to happen is not wrong. But deciding that that's what's most important and that's what has to be above all else, that's where greed comes into play. And that, that greedy attitude, which usually accompanies those who have a lot of money. And that, that's the danger of money is it's very difficult to realize where we are with it unless we can 
do a thorough self-evaluation of our own heart and our own mind. Because usually those who have great deals of money, which is most of us, when you look at what we have, usually greed and covetousness at some point accompanies that. Covetousness is the other one, desiring that which other people have simply because they have it. Well, tell me that doesn't play come into play in the rifle world. Okay. Well, you, you have <coughs> this shooter is doing really well in shooting and they have this, 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 and this. Well, I have to go buy all that too. I have to have an exact setup just like they have or else I'm not going to be good enough. I, what is it? And so desiring things just because other people have them is an ungodly attitude as well. Now, if those things are things that I want to accomplish goals in my shooting world, in my shooting life, that's, that's one thing. But just wanting something because someone else has it or because, and, and you know, companies are really good at their advertising. They, they play covetousness into their advertising because we get to liking certain companies. And then all of a sudden this company has a new thing. Oh, I have to have that new thing. Not because <laughs> what I have is insufficient, but because that's new. That's new and everybody else is getting it. I have to have it too. And so we have to be very careful of our mindset and our attitude towards the riches that we have. And the mindset can get to the point where it will, like I said, lead us down a dark path and, and it will consume us. Uh, Luke 12, verse 15, he said unto them, Take heed, beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Your life well, does not consist in the things you have. They're just... One thing, one thing that I've noticed is that some of the wealthiest and, and most well-off people that I, that I know that I deal with, they are the most vicious when it comes to demanding discounts and they're looking for a cheaper cheaper option always and they really grind on you to try to get some sort of discount and whereas guys that are more middle of the pack maybe and it's kind of a larger thing for them they feel a sense of accomplishment just having saved that much and and then so also when they when they are blessed with money they tend to be more giving also, whereas a lot of people I think that, kind of, that Greg, I think they're blessed because they're giving. But well, we'll get right. Into that yeah. That's my point is you know, I, I find it very easy when things are going well in my life, I give tremendously and I, I try to give until it hurts and then give a little bit more because it, that that's the kind of thing that makes you feel tremendous inside. And I try not to beat vendors up when I'm looking for something. You know, I try to make sure I'm being very, very fair and very forthright with my purchases. And then to understand what's happening on the other side. Folks, I know that the corporate mentality these days, this big greedy corporation type thing, it's kind of grinding on everybody every single day, every hour of the day. But there's a lot of companies, ours, for instance, very small, very small. And believe me when I say every single person that purchases anything from us on a daily basis, that is a monstrous blessing. Yes. And it's one yeah. that I don't take lightly. And so that blessing is what allows me to feel free to give wholly with my heart. And I don't have to worry about losing too much money in the service of others because no matter how much I give away, no matter what kind of philanthropic stuff that we seem to do, and we've done some crazy stuff. The number of CPSs that we gave away this year around Christmas, last year around Christmas time, it's ridiculous. It, it was thousands of dollars of, of equipment. And the number of orders that we have subsequently received has been mind blowing. It's just almost impossible for us to keep up with it. And so that is the, the rule. And it talks about this multiple places in the Bible. Don't let that greed consume you. If you're, if you're doing well and you're being blessed, then it's your duty to bless others. That means when you go to buy something, yeah. just buy the thing. Don't beat them up on price. Just <laughs> if well, it's something your, your money, your money, your things are your tools to accomplish God's will. So yeah. when you see somebody that, that is just, just struggling and really in need, give them a, give them a hand up. That, that's, that's your tool. The money you, you have is your tool to help them. The, the things that you have, the nice rifles that you have, they put you in a place to be in an opportunity to talk to people about things and to, to, to be 
where you can influence people. Everything that you have is not who you are. All your things are just tools that God has given you to accomplish his will. Well, and it's fun to see if you go to rifle shoots or even on forums or where shooters congregate, shooters tend to be a pretty giving group. They see somebody struggling and, and they don't have the right rear bag or they don't have the right bag rider or they don't have the whatever it happens to be right i mean it, i've seen guys give that stuff away oh well just, you can just have that you know, don't worry about it it's not it's not just businesses that are doing that it's individuals and there's a massive shortage right now of components guys are giving primers away um guys are are, are giving other components and and helping people that are new to the sport and so by and large shooters are a pretty philanthropic crowd they they tend to give but it's always good to maintain this perspective, right? Um, if you're doing well, treat others well. If you're not doing well, well, then you can typically count on people helping you if you are living in such a way that would cause you to deserve it. Even if you're not doing well, if you can find it in yourself to still help others, it's going to come around. Absolutely. It's going to come around. The Bible talks about that, and we're going to get into that more tomorrow. Uh, Thank you for joining us for Bullets from the Bible. We'll see you tomorrow.